All right, so I'm here with Yesenia. Yesenia, how old are you? 33. Are you originally from Arizona? Yes. You from Phoenix? From Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. I was raised and I lived most of my time in Maryville. And so a lot of, I was around, um, Bankrupt, a lot of bankrupt. Everything just went up high. Like it's 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 just hard out here. It's hard. I've been in the streets for almost a year. Can't get a job. Um, people just don't care about taking other people's shit. I don't have the the money to be buying an ID, buying a birth certificate. Cause that shit ain't cheap, it ain't cheap. And it's hard to be out here to like, we're bad people. We're not bad people. Cause there's a lot of good people out there that don't even deserve to be out here. How was your childhood growing up? You My, said you grew up in Maryville, right? Yeah. Did you have both parents? No, 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 no. I lost my dad at five, six years old. Um, my mom raised three of us, two of my brothers and me. And it was hard for her because she had to do two jobs. And come to find out, we're in bankrupt. We're, you know, we're losing our home. My mom struggled a lot. And it's just hard for, especially us that were from here. So where's your mom and your siblings at right now? Are they out here in the streets as well? Yes. Well, um, stay with the couple. My mom's trying to get her own place. Um, but me, I'm trying my best. But only certain people only help their certain they're a certain type of people, their race, and it's I don't think that's right, because a lot of, all of us deserve a chance in life because we're not all bad and and we're not trying to, you know, we do what we gotta do in order for us to eat. We we're gonna do what we gotta do, you know what I mean? People out there don't want to help. Like it's not. We offer to do something to be able to make our money to be able to eat. You know what I mean? And there's some of us that don't want to do nothing. They just want to come in. But the ones that are trying and trying and trying, it's hard because they want to treat us all the same. And it's, it, I don't think it's, it's fair because we're not all the same. Me, I can't go and find a spot to, you know, to go and lay and put my hand down. Like, I've been through so much in life growing up. that I wouldn't want the same thing to happen again. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people following me, trying to hit on me. I get scared to be out here. And I'm alone morning, day and night, not knowing what could happen. What are you doing right now to survive out here? 
how to get your money. I I ask pe so, you know people out there if they need anything done, if I'll clean their home, you know, clean their yard, something for pe just for something to eat or something to spare, you know. But there's even there's there's even times that I can't I can't get anything, and I would have to do what I gotta do, you know, yeah. to go and take a a piece of bread from the store, cause it's not cheap either. It's hard being out, out here, and especially in this cold. I have lost friends because of the cold. And there's a lot of things happening out there that even the cops don't even want to help. It's like when they feel like coming and helping, you know? I don't think it's it's right for us to live like this because our economy is like going insane. It's ridiculous. We can't even, not even get to one corner to another corner because we have to walk it. We could be freezing. And we have to walk it because other um, bus drivers, some bus drivers help, some bus drivers don't. They only help their certain race or they won't even stop and pull over to pick you up. They'll just pass you through. So you face a lot of discrimination out here? Yes, a lot. And not just that, a lot of... Um, um, Like se sexual assaults and it's scary because there, there could be a lot of them a lot of them and it's just me you know it's hard it's what do you do out here to keep yourself safe from that do you carry around pepper spray pepper spray and a, a knife I carry that around everywhere with me a pepper spray could work on some people, not all people, because not all people, you know, can handle the pepper spray. Some people can't, some people can't, because they're just... So you've had to use it before? Yes, plenty of time. Well, what was one time when you had to use it? Can you tell me about it? Um, there's this name, like... I go to the store and walking back to where I was going to lay my head, there's a native following me. I'll stop. I don't like people walking behind me. I don't like people walking behind me. And he act dumb. Like, he didn't hear me. We can't even walk to the corner without somebody following us and trying to do something. I have friends trying to go to work and they're right there trying to do something. And they're not, and it's like, it's even scary to even go to work like that, to get on, on, on the bus and these native people just want to take over. They are the ones following us, asking us if we charge, if we do this and do that. We don't accept that and we're going to do what we got to do and we don't want to.
We don't want to. But when it gets down like that, we have to. Because either our life or theirs. Because we have to defend ourselves one way or another. How was your life before you were out here on the street? What kind of job did you have? Were you working? Off and on. Off and on because especially with the COVID, I got sick twice mm -hmm. and I can, you know, be going to work. But I would work, I was working at Cafe Valley. I worked at the company Edge and it was a an all right job, but everything they want original documents, like original documents. Yeah. And I didn't have the original documents. The people be stealing the stuff. Now, I was living okay. I had my babies. And the state decides to get involved for no reason at all. Do good, still don't help. It still don't help. They go by what people, other people say and not the reality. So the state took your kids? Yes. What about substances? Do you mess with any substances? Are you on the blues or G out here? Um, I don't mess with the blues. I don't mess with that. First of all, I'm trying to get away from the people that do because once you doze off, somebody passes by, you don't know what could happen because you don't feel nothing. You don't. You don't feel if they're going through your bags, if they're, you know, you don't feel none of that. And I don't want to go through that again. I don't, I don't want to go through that. I never tasted pills. I don't like pills. I will never taste the pills. I can't stand it. Gee, I was off and on, off and on. But it kept on getting worse every time. Everything goes bad, like, I get clean and especially to get my kids. Money talks. Forget about what you gotta do. Money talks. Because I did everything I needed to do and I still don't got my babies. They just go by what other people say. How many kids do you have? Five. Five kids? How many boys, how many girls? Four girls and one boy. And their ages? I have a 15 year old, a 13, um, one's gonna turn 12, my son's eight, and my daughter's seven. And I miss my baby so much. So much, man, that everything was going well until the state says, "Oh, your son doesn't want to. Your son doesn't want to see you. How can you tell me my son doesn't want to see me? Can't you come and look at what I have? Can you come and see what I have? Pictures, visits I be going to, see how he looks when he's with me." They didn't want to see none of that. They didn't want to see how excited he looked, how happy he looked. When he was sick and he still had to go to the visits, they would send him home because he was sick. He would cry to go home. That's not right. They're supposed to keep the families together, help the families, not separate the families. Now, 
I can't see them at all, and I stay in communication with them at all. All because people have something against me. And because of that, I feel guilty that my family can't see them when it shouldn't be like that. My family shouldn't have to pay the price that they have against me. My family didn't do nothing to them or to the babies. My mom struggles a lot missing her five grandkids. It's it's been hard. And I feel like every time she gets sad or hurt emotionally I feel the guilt. The families that have my kids shouldn't be like that with my family. The problem, if the problem is with me, it should only be with me, not with them. Because they don't have nothing to do. I don't even know what problems they have against me anyway. But I know for a fact that they're going to do what they're going to do to see me hurt, to see me suffer, to see me, you know, in pain. Don't know why. But the, the state only helps family that got money. God didn't give us, put us out here with money. There's a lot of people that are struggling. There's people out there hurting their kids, abusing them, and they still have them. They don't even get involved. I see kids out there that are in diapers, no shoes, dirty, and it hurts that they can't get help. But the kids that are nicely dressed and good taken care of are getting basically taken away. <laughs> Me, I never laid a hand on, on, on my kids, never. And I wouldn't want my, I never wanted my kids to go through what I went through growing up without a father. My girls have their dad, they don't got their mom. My son and my daughter have, one of them have the dad, one of them doesn't. And they both don't have the mom. And they need both parents, not just one, especially the females. Us moms, like me, I never wanted my kids to be without their other parent. That's why I, when I've been in an abusive relationship, I still didn't do nothing because I wanted my kids to have their, their dad. And look at what, how it paid out. Now the one that's abusive has my kids, and when I'm the one that needs the help, I don't have it. I don't have it at all. All right, Yesenia, well, thank you for sharing your story. Really do appreciate it. Are you okay with me using this on my YouTube channel? Yes, sir. And just in case somebody wants to reach out to you with any sort of help, or donations, 
Do you have any contact information that you want to share, like an email? I can't. E I like can't that? even get a phone. I and have people that phone? people that are stealing my 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 information is getting shit like that. Have like you got one from the Obama. They Obama say that I'm, I don't qualify. That I already have one. Yeah. I don't have one. You could tell them they lost it. They got they sold in there. Yeah, yeah, and they keep saying every time I, I I go, they're like, "Oh well, you don't qualify for a phone. You only qualify for a SIM card." Okay, how am I gonna qualify for a SIM card if I don't got a phone? Do you have an email though? Uh, Facebook, anything like that? Facebook. I got a Facebook. What, what's your Facebook? It's under Yesenia Flores. So if anybody wants to contact you, they can reach out to you through there, right? Yes. All right, Yesenia. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thank you.